China, it is they are the biggest consumer of all products. Mm-hmm. We cannot just overlook it. And if you see the last four years history of China, it has constantly moved between various high positions of demand to the lowest slack in demand. Ultimately, it affects everything when you come to the other countries also, because the demand and supply of China ultimately challenges the demand supply of all neighboring countries. everyone this is devlina your host and welcoming all of you to another exciting episode of icons behind brand and i have a very special guest with me today and join us on icons behind brand for an insightful conversation with mr saikat basu the vice president and marketing and sales head of ck birla group with a distinguished career that includes roles at J- jk paper limited and gamon india Saikat brings a wealth of experience in marketing, promotions, ATL, BTL, sales, distribution, channel management, retail, market research and key account management. So don't miss this opportunity to learn from a true leader on the upcoming episode. So a warm welcome to you Saikat. Thank you so much Devlina and uh, pretty happy with the wonderful word you used about me. I'm so excited to have you here, uh, Shrikat, uh, the kind of experiences uh, which you have and the time which uh, you have in, uh, invested in different industry. So I am sure a lot to uncover from your uh, experiences uh, in this episode through this conversation. Okay, so I would love to know about you first, uh, you know, before we get into your experiences and, uh, you know, a little detailed about the marketing and other things. So about your journey and about your professional background so that we can connect connect the dots and uh, which sets the context of the whole conversation then. Uh, I have, uh, I am an MBA from XLRI, Shepshetpur. Mm-hmm. I did my MBA in 2004. Okay. I was an engineer before that and I have worked in four different industries. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is electrical transmission, then uh, construction with Gammon India Limited, okay. then chemicals and then in paper and packaging. Mm-hmm. So this is the total gamut. In my present company in the CK Birla Group, I am taking care of uh, some portion of paper as well as tissues, which is a new learning point for me. It's a specialty grade of paper. Okay. And it's a different way from which paper or packaging is uh, branded or sold. Mm-hmm. So, th- uh, Shaikat, I am sure, I mean, I am there to uncover a lot of things uh, through the conversation here. So, let's get into uh, your expertise. Okay, so uh, what do you think about, uh, you know, marketing and uh, when I say that it's like see in your opinion uh, marketing is marketing becoming more complex in today's business landscape and if so then what are the key factors that is contributing to this complexity yes uh, the scenario of marketing is becoming more complex day by day because of global pressures and uh, many international brands now uh, fulfilling the scenario of the Gen Z whose behavior, consumer behavior is totally different from even the millennials. That's so true. they are an animal by themselves. So, so all these things being there, it's uh, very difficult for a marketeer to keep to some set pattern. Mm-hmm. They have to constantly innovate there are other uncertainties also, as you correctly uh, told me that what are the complexities. I'll tell you what are the complexities. China. China, it is, they are the biggest consumer of all products. Mm-hmm. We cannot just overlook it. And if you see the last four years history of China, it has constantly moved between various high positions of demand to the lowest slack in demand. Ultimately, it affects everything when you come to the other countries also. Because the demand and supply of China ultimately 
challenges the demand supply of all neighboring countries. Right. The equation changes, and you have to modulate your brand presence. You have to have modulate your marketing infrastructure, your product range, to meet to those challenges. This is one of the other things, and I talked about the Gen Z. Uh, what I I can give you some examples. My I don't want to read the. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can talk about medical tourism. Okay. It's a buzzword now. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about positioning this product, a hospital, mm-hmm. it was previously a totally healthcare. Right. Ten years back. Mm-hmm. Today. a hospital is positioned as a hospitality experience so that is a major change which has happened in the review of a hospital people talk about the food people talk about the waiting area people talk about the experience with the customer service executive how the nurse behaved so your entire gamut has changed right. overnight so once you were branding a hospital once you were branding a medical center now you have to brand it as a not only for the patient but the people who are coming to the patient so then your customer changes your customer no longer remains the patient your customer changes his behavior changes his preference changes and the communication and the branding you have to do will also change i don't know whether you heard about it there is a product which is roaming around in the market called home icu home icu for the medical in the yes icu yes so it's being it's a costly product but it's being branded and clarified and communicated in a very very interesting way mm-hmm. where people can get all the checks and balances in the comfort of their homes mm-hmm. in front of their loved ones okay. and at the same time the uh, the checks and balances should also be there and the care should also be there they can be with the loved ones now this is a novel concept now this concept when the medical institutes have to promote it needs a totally different way in which now these are the complexities i'm talking about that people's needs have changed so it's a different way we have to think of novel ways to market it and brand it so there are a lot of things which has changed and that's how you know marketing is becoming so vast and that's how the complexities also comes with when it is vast when there are a lot of things which is happening right okay right Uh, Mr. Saikat, when it comes to you know brand messaging, okay, so how do you ensure the consistency and coherence in your brand messaging across various marketing channels? Yes. Uh, now, first of all, it's a very interesting question because the word we use is omni channel. So today, it's a very normal word that every product has to have an omni channel presence. So it has to be everywhere. You cannot succeed if you are very good, say, on the social network and very poor in modern retailing. So all these, whether your brand, first of all, in any channel, whether it is modern retail, traditional retail, online retail, whether it it is in the social media, whatever, wherever it is, your brand has to look, feel, sound similar. That's one. Uh, again i will go into certain examples so that it will be easier to explain basically there are various things whether like the brand icon the brand logo the font the you can talk about the color which you choose the ambassador brand ambassador whom you choose to promote your brand your own office premises you cannot be promoting a gen z product and sitting in a traditional tata motors office so everything has to gel every your website your customer service desk so there there has to be the coherence and the uh, the consistency which you talked about has to be looked into all these parameters one by one if you say in the airline industry i'll say uh indigo has a totally different position yes while if you say emirates has a totally different position emirates stands for uh comfort and hospitality while indigo stands for timeliness yeah so the positioning is different so they have to wherever they when they think about their brand their brand should be consistent in if you go to the it's not only about the color and the logo and all 
it is about customer service also. a customer who books a ticket on an indigo website or gets a customer service from an indigo representative in the airport or anywhere else there he needs he has come to this airline to get timeliness so he wants a person who will take his bag in a minute and let him off okay and do not ask him with questions like namaste ji where are you going ji ye wo they are not because they are not positioned in that way mm-hmm. that's not their objective a person who takes a ticket on the windigo should want that his data goes to the next page very quickly yeah because that's why he has to be chosen like that right as compared to the emirates it's for the luxury travel mm-hmm. so there their customer service desk their uh, website should give the comfort the warm maybe a little two lines more to mm-hmm. feel you comfortable with their lines so your brand should be coherent you should talk everywhere with every experience a customer every touch point a customer has with your company or your brand should give the same message what the brand stands for if i am standing for a everything should be designed in it if i am standing for b everything should be done. i hope i have been able to yes yes definitely and uh, very clearly explained with the examples which you took uh, saikar uh, you know i mean uh, it's it's clear that i mean if your audience is this and this is your objective then uh, you know the whole marketing messaging has to be in line towards your uh, consumer and in line towards your objective so the emirates and indigo example is amazing uh, you know you might have to say a little two two lines extra because that is the need of the brand positioning and that's how your consumer expects from you but whereas in indigo if you talk a little more and you are talking about time and uh, efficiency uh, then uh, you know it is not matching to the message which you want to convey so clearly um, conveyed the message so how how do you establish an open and transparent communication culture within your team and organization see when you're sitting in a position of something called head of marketing and vice president it's not easy it sounds very fancy designation and all the power comes with lot of responsibility and it needs a you know challenge and it needs a patience so how do you do that okay see internal communication uh, has to be honest first of all you have your intention should be honest and uh, how do you the main uh, i think the agenda what a leader should follow is that they should always promote the organizational goal over all self goals one other thing in uh, internal communication i'll say is that that we should always have a suggestion kiosk from the okay. that's way the whole team gets to be involved you can have a suggestion system you can maybe appreciate the best suggestions done upfront uh, motivation that we have. as also we can also uh, look into and also we can, we have to give feedback on what happened on the suggestions okay so that clears your honesty and intent of the management that okay we are being taken a part of the team and we may have given a suggestion which may work or we it may not work because of x y z reasons and the management later came back to me and say that this look i took your idea and did this i didn't take your idea because it looked like this so this clears and clear, this brings a lot of lot of bond for me as well as the uh, honesty in the internal communications so ai like we talk about uh, ai here i'm talking about ai emotional intelligence and empathy are essential for marketing you know i mean we cannot remove that emotions from the marketing because that has to be there the storytelling and uh, the emotional intelligence so how would you infuse the emotional appeal into brands messaging and storytelling to create a deeper connections with the customers okay so again with an example i'll tell you when we were doing of this my present company it's an 87 year old traditional group okay uh, naturally we have heard about these people from pre independence times mm-hmm. and so when we created a journey for 
the customer of the company so we we looked into various stories your vendors stories with your own employees stories with your uh, their parents you go to a factory of a birla or a tata company and uh, while going the auto wala there speaks about my father used to be a labor or a supplier within the company so all these stories can be mingled and it can create a very very emotional connecting message an ad or a pitch or a ppt or whatever a teaser you can say whatever uh, to for the end customer you have to weave these stories together to create the magic at the design stage you should just collect stories without under without judging whether this story is gelling with our concept or not mm-hmm. or the brand or not your brand may have a particular purpose your brand stand for abc plus that's all this story may not be gelling with it. no no issue take that story and when you go back to the design room maybe you try to mingle all of them and try to see what is coming out in motion you can create try to weave stories and try to create an emotional connect even with the most basic commodity products wow yeah we uh, when you said about papers uh, i was actually thinking uh, about how to connect that you know because my question was into emotional connect and uh, you uh, you very uh, well uh, said that you know how we can actually create a emotional connect with each and every product uh, you just have to use your thought process and connect the stories and dots uh, through uh, meeting a lot of customers and consumers uh, you know uh, i really love the idea of you you just keep keep it in your database the stories and uh, you never know when you might be able to connect all the dots and uh, that becomes your connecting point with your customers and that keeps you apart from the uh, competitors uh, message or marketing the way they market because it's your unique story correct wow absolutely i really love that i think this is my take away uh, so i have lot of stories and lot of things which are like you know bits and parts here and there so something uh, which needs to get collected and keep it in one place so that some day i might you know find out something out of that <laughs> so Great. that's a great take away from you mr saikar today i feel okay before we wind up this conversation i want you to talk for our viewers a lot of them are aspiring marketing professional so what is your message for an aspiring marketing professional okay uh do i not a expert in this i have barely 24 years of experience but still and try to say three things to them one i might hear a little traditional when i say these things at least a couple of them but uh, i think that works so i'm telling number one you should read your textbooks mm-hmm. it's a little traditional line i find many new marketing professionals and mbas coming who are very good in their crops okay ask them what is a bcg matrix or asks them what is a maslow's level yeah, of hierarchy mm-hmm. they will not be able to see it that's something i don't connect with mm-hmm. because see ultimately these frameworks have ha- have helped previous products and brands mm-hmm. so you mm-hmm. can't just wish them away you may you may uh, you may build on it with newer tools and how to propagate your product or your brand but whatever you learned in your textbooks don't forget it. that is one thing i believe when you brush up on them that will give you a pedestal from which you can go mm-hmm. that's it. number 2 i think uh, is commercial agility and analytics mm-hmm. i would say uh, all new marketing professionals you just can't be innovative that's not enough to be a marketing professional today there are so many metrics there are so many ways to capture atls capture vtls capture eyeballs so you have to study all of them you have to understand how to connect the dots and how to match the numbers 
so that thing sometimes marketing professionals give a little less importance but mm-hmm. i have a feeling that maths has more importance mathematics you cannot stay with or with whichever profession you are in you know that's right you cannot be mathematics definitely not in marketing yeah Ma- you cannot be a good marketer if you are poor in your calculative ability or in your uh, analytical skills that's what i was about so, to say especially in marketing you cannot escape that part right. you cannot escape it. numbers are very important very yes. important yeah third and the last point i'm still is observe 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 a marketing person has to be a good person you have to spend time in the shop floor you have to spend time in the you means i'm talking to the aspiring marketing mm-hmm. professionals so um, you have to spend time with the with the shop owners how they behave with the in the modern retail chain maybe how they behave with the customers how customers take their decision when they're choosing a brand how they negotiate with each other on the price how they take an alternative product you have to stand there and feel it to understand how the process happens it cannot be it can't be learned in the design room it has to be learned in the sales scenario these are the three basic things that you want all in marketing as far as professionals to be proficient in yeah basics are the basics for a reason and uh, because that is the foundation that creates the foundation that might sound cliche like after some time because we have been talking about that but that's most important what you said about you know what you read in your education don't forget that in your textbooks don't forget that because they are included in the textbook for a reason they are the foundation and when you know your basics the foundations and that's how you build up your empire on those uh, you know principles and theories right so right. extremely practical and uh, Uh, yeah a lot of things came from you uh, soikot so i feel we had a wholesome conversation in a very short duration and uh, thank you for being here uh, on saturday afternoon uh, almost evening so thank you for being here sharing your incredible experience on icons behind brand and it's incredible having you you are welcome devolina and you have been also a wonderful host and it was a great talk Thank you so much.